uh, and just uh, yeah, first of all, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks for joining this session. And today I'll be talking about deep learning for building immersive experiences in the metaverse. So myself, Manorama Jha, and already Vijaya uh, gave a good introduction about me. Thanks, Vijaya. So yeah, so just a sec. Yeah. So what is metaverse? So let's uh, uh, dig a bit uh, deeper into this. So metaverse consists of uh, immersive experiences, digital assets, and digital exchanges. So when we say what is immersive experience, it is basically the extended reality environment, a uh, seamless physical interaction with virtual assets, teleportation into multi-user experience. And when we come to a uh, digital asset, it, uh, it consists of high definition 3D scene, accurate real-time physics simulation, and non uh, NFTs that many people is already aware of. And uh, coming to digital exchanges, uh, it has multiplayer games, remote collaboration uh, through telepresence and blockchain and cryptocurrency. This is what uh, Metaverse consists of, and we have divided it in three segments. So moving forward uh, in today's talk, uh, I will be mostly focusing on uh, immersive experiences and how to build up this immersive experience and how AI play a major role or deep learning play a major role in creating one. So I'll just uh, have a, a quick overview of my today's uh, presentation. So first we will uh, go through, uh, first I'll introduce you all to the extended reality. Then we will analyze the typical mixed reality pipeline. And, and the third will be like, we will uh, deep dive into the alignment in mixed reality uh, that is a crucial AI task in the metaverse. And at last, uh, I'll walk you through the, like how to build a hybrid mixed reality cloud for supporting AI powered experiences at scale. So first of all, uh, introducing inter introduction to extended reality. So uh, we have two types of environment. One is real and one is synthetic. So if we talk about virtual reality, like I mentioned, there, are the, there is virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. So if we talk about virtual reality, so in virtual rea reality, the user is placed in a virtual environment that is generated asynthetically using digital assets. That is the CAD models. That is what uh, we call as virtual reality. Uh, now coming to the real, real environment, so in augmented uh, reality or mixed reality, the user is provided with an augmented view of the real environment where digital objects uh, coexist seamlessly with the real world. So this is what uh, we call or what is non known as augmented or mixed reality. So coming to, uh, coming to the applications, uh, so there are three major applications uh, which, uh, the, which industry is currently focusing on. Uh, going first is education or entertainment. So uh, MR provides a immersive hands-on learning experience uh, that is more appealing to the audience. Second is the manufacturing. So MR will help manufacturing by acting as a seamless bridge between computer modeling and phys uh, physical prototyping and also repair and maintenance. The third application comes uh, is the healthcare. So here, MR will help in improving the productivity and accuracy of uh, several medical science procedures. Uh, uh, so yeah, so now like uh, when we talked about the uh, applications, uh, then people might think, uh, how do we deploy that? How that is working? So here comes the hardware, which uh, we use to experience the immersive uh, effect. So. Uh, today I will I will uh, take an example of uh, one hardware that is Microsoft Tolerance 2, and uh, uh, having that I will just explain every segment of the talk. So Microsoft Tolerance 2 uh, has uh, yeah three different uh, uh, major functionality that it provides. The first is like uh, spatial mapping, localization, and gesture recognition. So uh, that where comes the camera depth and the IMU sensors. Second is the display. 
so two major projectors beams into the stereo image directly into the user eyes for an immersive experience that's uh, that's how it creates the immersive experience for the user the display system tracks the eye and head movement of the user and adapt in real time for persistence of vision and the third is uh, the hands free communication using language uh, natural language so it is basically an uh, there are basically an array of microphones and stereo speakers support uh, like that supports a natural language control in interface for hands free communication like gesture or interaction with the uh, uh, di like digital object in real world so this is how uh, it works so now uh, coming down uh, to uh, like how we can analyze a mixed reality a typical mixed reality pipeline so first, uh, uh, let's uh, go into like what is 3D scene understanding and spatial mapping. So first of all, uh, first of uh, one of the first uh, feature is like ground plane detection. So basically, uh, what happens here is it detects and segments out horizontal planes where objects can be anchored. So it can be anything our floor or our wall or a table uh, where we just have our uh, system or anything or our uh, target object. So this is important for setting up uh, the global coordinate system that matters a lot in any uh, computer vision application or MR application. Second is a structure from motion. So construct, uh, it is basically like construct a 3D point cloud from a sequence of post image scan of an object environment. Third is a 3D point cloud segmentation. So like it is like detecting and segmenting out the different categories of object in a 3D point cloud. Having that, uh, there will be a target object. So when I say target object, like basically what we are trying to do with that object, are we trying to overlay it or are we trying to segment it? So there are multiple use cases that comes with this feature. Fourth is the tracking. Like uh, basically it is like detecting the same object across multiple frames and estimate how the object moves through the scene. So this is basically when uh, you can consider a example where a car is moving. So for uh, yeah, so for that use case, you will see that car is at different uh, pose in different frames. Uh, third is like localization, like here uh, basically estimating your current position and orientation in the map using odometry or and tracking. So this is provided by the MR device. And now we uh, come down to uh, 3D rendering. That is also um, one of the most crucial part, like after uh, like how you are rendering a content on the device. So it is attaching the digital model to fixed uh, points. That is you know, basically the anchors on real world surfaces and making sure that the digital model does not uh, shift its position or orientation as the user's viewpoint changes. So this is uh, basically uh, what anchor is anchoring is. Second is the alignment. Alignment is uh, basically the over, uh, it is like overlaying a virtual model of an object on top of a real world instance of the same object such as the, uh, such that the position, orientation and scale of the virtual model matches perfectly with the pose and dimension of the real world object. Third comes the occlusion. Occlusion is like uh, detecting a 3D object correctly even when part of it uh, it is occluded behind an obstacle. This is particularly important for tracking, like uh, I just mentioned in the previous slide. And the fourth comes the remote rendering. So basically rendering high polygon photorealistic 3D object is crucial for an immersive MR experience. And it is difficult to achieve within limited compute budget of the headset. So we must render the 3D scene in the cloud and uh, stream the user current view to the headset. So it is basically the cloud and edge platform uh, that uh, we should, uh, that, that I will be talking about in the next slides. Yeah, so uh, manual and, uh, manipulation and interaction, uh, it is also one of the uh, uh, crucial part in MR, where you are uh, literally trying to move an um, digital object or manipulate uh, the digital object like rotation, position, and uh, scaling, or you can just uh, play, freely pick it up and place it from one uh, position or one location to another. So yeah, in that, uh, the first comes the numerical integration. 
efficient numerical integration is key to accurate phys uh, physics simulation for modeling interactions. Collision and detection and contact modeling. Uh, basically, it is modeling collision and contact is a challenging task that is again crucial in many MR uh, use cases. And uh, third comes the material properties. So material properties must be properly modeled for uh, representing surfaces for virtual objects correctly and modeling interactions between real and virtual objects. Constraint implementation, uh, then this is basically the physics simulation uh, must take into account a physical constraint. These must be uh, de uh, detected and implemented uh, uh, properly. And the last one is the multimedia gesture recognition. So this is uh, nothing but the speech recognition, natural language understanding, and detection of hand gestures are crucial component for a MR system. So having that, I'll move to the next segment, uh, which is like uh, deep diving into the alignment in mixed reality. So yeah. So this is an in interesting problem that uh, the entire MR community is trying to solve. So I'll just define uh, what we are trying to do here uh, with a simple example. So uh, we can see on the left side, a person who is wearing a HoloLens 2. And on the right side, we can see a real world uh, bunny uh, sitting on a table. So now uh, this is a real world object. And here uh, we can see a green uh, digital twin of the bunny, which is sitting at HoloLens 2 coordinate system. So this is completely virtual. And what is here? This is a, a, a real world object, which people can uh, see through eyes. And this object, uh, this green bunny is the CAD model, which people can see through device. So the target is how do we uh, apply a correct transformation matrix uh, to this bunny, to the green bunny, so that it comes and uh, overlay with the real world object. So coming down, uh, if we want to just define this problem, so it is like uh, the problem uh, is basically to determine the pose of a real world object in the headset's coordinate system and apply the transformation to its virtual CAD. Virtual CAD is the green bunny model so that they align perfectly when viewed through the headset. So this is what uh, is the problem statement that we are trying to solve. So, yeah. So now, uh, like, uh, imagine a, a scenario. Imagine a, a scenario where we are trying to uh, completely build a car. So we can just take an example of a car. I can just name the car like Tata Nexon. So if you are trying to uh, build a, a real uh, Tata Nexon, uh, physical, physical Tata Nexon, forget about virtual. So there, if we do that manually, manually, I mean, first, uh, how the process begins. So uh, the process starts with designing a CAD model on the system that engineers do. Then they send out the CAD model for 3D printing. And we have the 3D printing. Then what happens is they try to assemble all the parts inside a, a big hollow car, uh, car outer structure. So inside uh, whatever they have just printed, they try to assemble it. And there is a lot of uh, manual effort. And once they are done, what happens is uh, they just uh, get it reviewed from the seniors or someone who is in charge of uh, uh, reviewing the how the uh, objects are placed or how the uh, different parts are placed. Is that correct uh, before it goes to manufacturing? So here, uh, like it uh, may take a lot of iterations and it also take a lot of uh, uh, manual efforts. So now this was a real world scenario. So where we are trying to build a uh, entire car. Now let's bring MR into this scenario. How MR will uh, reduce the entire uh, man, uh, effort from human being, and also how it will reduce the uh, lot of iterations and manual work. So now suppose uh, let's go back uh, to the place where I said that we have already assembled the parts uh, inside our car and our car is in a state of review. So now uh, let's bring uh, two or three people who is in charge of inspection and make them wear the uh, MR device. So now what happens is uh, they can just uh, review like what they will do is how to review now. 
the question comes how we can review it so now we have a physical car and we have a digital twin like i just i was talking about a digital bunny which is in a hololens to coordinate system so now comes like a digital twin of tata nexon which is in a hololens to coordinate system and we have a physical tata nexon which is in front of us which is uh, just now assembled and it is ready to be reviewed so what mr device will do is we will uh, like it does the overlay so it will uh, overlay the digital model on the real world model and the three uh, people which is in charge of inspection so what they will try to do is they can like just go around and see the parts if there is any uh, uh error which has to be improved so it is like multiple people uh, if they are seeing from different direction uh, so it will also reduce like you don't have to bring on two or three different people on two or three different days they can just interact together so if and also it supports that you can interact while you are uh, 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 like reviewing so it is a, it is like a shared experience so this is how uh, mr helps in reducing the entire effort so now uh, coming back to the uh, to my slides uh, now we will try to break down the steps like how it actually happens how the overlay actually happens how it is helping in uh, reducing the entire uh, uh, iteration process or the it is uh, reducing the manual efforts so now in the slides like on the right side uh, we can see that uh, we have a uh, uh we have a capture of the real world and now what we do suppose a, a person is wearing hololens too so it can see this car dashboard in front of uh, him or her and now uh, what hololens do i will actually do is it will uh, use uh, it will uh, yeah so it will uh, collect its sensor data sensor data i mean it has uh, many sensors like depth uh, color and other imu sensors are there so it collects those data and then it uh, helps in point cloud generation and uh, when we say uh, we have like we are generating point cloud from depth frame so it don't capture it don't has it don't have textures so we need color data for that that is also provided by hololens too so having that uh, we do we have a proper rgbd point cloud which we just uh, use for semantic segmentation so once we are uh, done with the semantic segmentation uh, then we just go ahead with the mesh generation and then comes the object decomposition object decomposition uh, decomposition is basically uh, like segmenting or decomposing the object so one it can be uh, like target object and the other object which is present in the scene so we can basically know which object to register or which object to overlay so now comes like the object registration so this this uh, module it takes care of uh, uh, providing us with the exact matrix which we can apply on our digital uh, twin so that it overlays with the uh, real world object so basically if i just go back to the problem that i just defined so now we have a tata nexon in front of us so uh, this should be the transformation matrix which we should apply to the digital twin of the tata nexon which is sitting in hololens 2 so so that it overlays and then the uh, person anyone can just investigate the uh, errors which uh, is there in the card before it goes for manufacturing so moving down to the next slide so i'll just give a quick overview of a demo uh, so basically if you can see here so we have a scene where we have like i have a cluttered work desk which consists of multiple object we can see uh, like uh, oculus is there a box is there book is there and uh, the ta in this and there is a lander also so in this the target object is our viking lander the 3d printed a nasa viking lander model uh, and we will be trying to overlay this so let's uh, look ahead like how we are trying to overlay a uh, digital twin of it on the real world so now what happens is now a person is wearing the device and uh, this is the scene a person is wearing the device and it is like basically now a device will start collecting the information information i mean the depth and the rgb and the other metadata that are the camera parameters and pose uh, that 
that is needed for the point cloud generation that I just talked. And now we have a, a grid raster object tracking uh, workflow, or a, you can say a component, uh, which takes this data. And we also have a training data. Like if whatever is our target object, we need a training, uh, a training data for that. So this will be the input to our object tracking module. And uh, this is a phase where it starts to uh, learn like how to align. So for aligning, it needs data. So we are providing that data. And going forward, how uh, what it does is once it has the data and the generation, the point cloud generation or other uh, data is ready to be processed. So it next, what it does is it generates the mesh. And then it uh, does the segmentation or the decomposition of the scene. And then, and then we finally, uh, like uh, after the segmentation or decomposition, like I mentioned earlier, so it uh, after the decomposition is done, so we know uh, which is the point cloud of the target object. And then we try to generate the uh, metric, uh, transformation metrics for that. So here uh, we can see the overlay. So uh, on the right side, we can see the uh, yellow lander, that is the digital twin, which is overlaying with the real world counterpart. So this is a short demo, like how uh, in real life uh, scenario, it can be anything, target object can be anything. So it doesn't matter, it has to be small or large. It can be like I said, it can be a car, it can be an aeroplane, it can be a bottle, it can be a football, anything. So this was a quick uh, demo that how this happened uh, in real life. So here comes the challenges. Like, uh, what are the challenges in to achieve this overlay uh, for uh, like uh, for any object? So suppose it was a lander; it is small, but we might have a, a, a huge model which has like it is a high polygon model. So now, how do we uh, render that? So yeah, so I'll walk you through the uh, walk you all through the challenges that we face uh, in setting up this workflow. So first is the moving target. So this is uh, one of the uh, major problem that even uh, uh, the computer vision community faces. So the, yeah, so defining this problem, uh, like we can say the real world object and the user's head may move during the pose estimation process. Since you are wearing the device, you cannot keep it still uh, in the entire uh, session. Like suppose you are running a session, it cannot be still. It is impossible. Even it can, there can be millimeter change so this needs uh, yeah to address this uh, so this needs motion detection followed by recomputation or adjustment of the transformation function hence latency uh, is an important factor while designing such algorithms second is the non rigid alignment so in many real world application the target object is deformable as in the example of surgeons trying to align pre operative scans with liver or, uh, liver uh, liver organs sorry live organs this adds additional shape parameters to the transformation function that needs to be estimated in real time and the third uh, comes the robustness the system should be robust uh, to varying illumination and noise in the environment so when i say system this is our uh, mr or ar headset so these are the challenges that we have and Moving ahead, I will uh, talk about how to address those challenges and why we need a hybrid AI cloud for MR. So how a uh, hybrid AI cloud for MR address those three challenges that I was talking about. So yeah, so there are uh, two conflicting requirements of mixed reality. Uh, the first one is immersive experiences powered by high quality, high accurate 3DI uh, without any perceivable latency. And the second is a mixed reality should be low power, lightweight, comfortable, and also affordable. So, yeah. So now coming down to system design. Uh, so basically, uh, like I mentioned, uh, to address those challenges, so we need to offload uh, some of the component uh, to the cloud and the uh, few components uh, to the edge. So when I say edge or on device, it is the low power system with comfortable thermos. That is our, uh, you can consider it as MR or AR headset. And when I say cloud, it is the high power CPUs and uh, specialized compute resources like uh, GPU, TPU, and 
FPGA, etc. So it can be a lot other resources as well. So coming down to our on edge or on device, uh, sorry, on device or on edge. Uh, so it is like as uh, to just describe it. So as latency is introduced by limited uh, network bandwidth, jobs that do not require uh, do not require high performance compute are uh, run on the device itself. So these jobs specifically include those that are the most crucial for generating uh, responses to the user's input, like gestures and etc. So uh, on edge, uh, like on device, uh, we basically try to uh, have three different things that are uh, or three different components that is like data capture or data transmission and receipt or gesture recognition and feedback. But on the if we go to the cloud, so if you want to just describe the scenarios, it is like as high power parallel computing hardware cannot be included in a wearable MR headset. Running this task on the device would introduce high latency and ruin the immersive experience. So it is very important uh, to offload the heavy lifting to cloud servers and streaming the results to the device is a viable solution to this problem. So this is one of the problem that I just uh, that was one of the challenges. So on the cloud, we try to uh, have three different things. Those are like AI task, uh, high polygon rendering, or the phys physics simulation. This is uh, all about the system design, or we can say the cloud and edge design that uh, we follow. So OK, uh, so now uh, uh, concluding this talk, I will uh, try to introduce you all to our uh, grid raster mixed reality platform uh, that we have. So now, uh, like I just introduced, like uh, what is uh, cloud, what is edge? So now, uh, on the right, we have our edge on device that is our hololens 2 it can be hololens 2 it can be tablet uh, it can be uh, other devices as well so for now i'll just go with ahead with hololens 2 and tablet so like we have on device um, processing like sorry uh, so on device, uh, we have like we are what we are doing is uh, we are sending out the data, like I mentioned, like transmitting uh, transmitting the data uh, to the server. And uh, on the cloud, what we are uh, doing is we are having all the three different uh, key components that is like 3D spatial mapping, 3DI computer vision, and low latency rendering. So these are all uh, are present in, uh, on our cloud. And how we are communicating between them is through uh, Wi-Fi or cable or 5G. And basically, after uh, we are processing the entire, uh, we are processing uh, the entire, like all the, or we can say in short, all the outputs from our three of the key components are sent back uh, to the client uh, through frames, like the rendering, uh, rendered frames are sent back to the client. And that's how we are able to uh, have an immersive experience of its low latency. So, yeah, so I think with this, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, if you have any question, you can always get back to me. So I have added uh, the link to my website. So, yeah, thank you all. Yeah, now if you have any question, I think you can unmute and ask. Hey Manorama, this is Gautam. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I can code and I can also do computer vision. I'm already part of uh, some of the computer vision projects. Mm -hmm. um, so, most probably we do uh, things around Python and uh, Flask. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, what other skills would I need to get into this? Uh, get into MR? Or yeah. Okay, so if you know Python and if you know Flask, so you are good to start with uh, uh, the like building this. Suppose you are asking about how to build this uh, cloud and on edge uh, this architecture. So you are good to uh, start with that. But having uh, like having this, uh, you have to like it will take some time for you to get used to the MR device. So it's not that uh, difficult. Uh, so once you start using the device. Uh, like you can think your MR device as a black box. 
so everything you are having on the cloud and if you know a uh, python and if you know flask uh, so if you know one of the programming languages very well so it is not very difficult to start building uh, this workflow so like uh, don't worry about the mr device so it is like just practice so if you you will get used to it once you start using it hi madam yeah a uh, great presentation there thank uh, you and I have, a, I have doubts on the uh, like uh, if you go back to your slides like uh, the ground plane being uh, detected so that is the first thing that has been done right yeah ground plane detection yes 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 yeah okay so we, like uh, then only we go on to the mesh generation and other parts so the, how the uh, ground plane detection works so this ground plane detection is inbuilt uh, with a hololens to uh, slam so it is like very different from what we are like what i just explained about the mesh generation so once you uh, suppose you wear hololens 2 so if you have experience so once as soon as you launch hololens 2 you will see that it start uh, gathering the data and it start uh, uh, learning the environment so you will see even for your plane, it detects the plane, it detects the wall, or it detects a table. Okay. So, so it is it is a different, it is inbuilt with the device. So it is not uh, what we have to worry about to develop that work. So, so it's something they have done great, very quick with that device. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and one more, natural language detection. Uh, and like you are talking about natural language. Yes, here. Uh, uh, can you explain it a little more and what do you mean by a natural language? Detection? So, yeah, basically what happens is, uh, suppose, uh, I'll give a very simple example. So now if you wear a uh, HoloLens 2, like I'm just uh, trying to uh, explain with that device. So it is like uh, when you wear a device and you can just start uh, ask, like uh, you can use your voice command to say, take a picture or start recording so you don't have to even interact it so if you say take a picture it will take a picture of that view if you say start recording it will start recording so it is like you don't have to even use the gesture that's what i meant with natural language understanding this is also inbuilt with uh mr system our hololens too okay okay so there is no uh like uh, uh button say start recording Start it is there it is there that there comes the hand gestures so it is there hand gestures uh, th that's where we use so uh, there is a ui like there will be a welcome ui where you can just uh, press on take a picture or uh, start recording so it will take a picture or start recording so there is an alternative either you can use a voice command or either you can use a, a hand gesture hand gesture is also used for interacting with the uh, this uh, digital model like you can literally move the digital model from one place to another after you wear the device. So those are also like hand gestures. So it's like when we speak in front of a phone, then we see suggestions in Amazon. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, sim similar to that. Okay. Yeah. And one more thing, the final thing that is semantic segmentation. So like if you go into that uh, yeah. like semantic, what exactly happens in that semantic segmentation? Yeah, so in this, right, uh, so now we have a mesh. Now, how do we identify uh, which objects are there in the scene? So, so basically, why we try to do is like we try to recognize which is our target object. Suppose if you see this point cloud, so in this point cloud, all are of like, uh, like we cannot recognize, right, which is our target object. There are, there are multiple objects with same textures. So now if we do uh, the semantic segmentation, we actually know uh, there are like different objects of different size and different shape in the scene and which is our and we actually know which object to look at uh, for our overlay and which is our like I said target object. Okay, so how, how okay, so it's like from the mesh or from the point load or mesh, whatever we have generated, we we'll try to identify the object objects in the scene. Yeah. So like uh, what are the techniques involved in that that yeah. goes that goes in the semantics. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Madam. Yeah, thanks, William. Uh, hi, Madam. This is Sarang. 
So I have a basic question. So uh, the, the title is saying deep learning word metaverse. So the metaverse is um, uh, what I understand is is completely virtually virtual world, right? But uh, here we are talking about the mixed reality. That means we are interacting with the uh, real world objects. So so how does it is uh, uh, correlate? Yeah. So metaverse is not uh, like uh, what what I want to say. It is not completely virtual. So when it says virtual, like it can be any device, any uh, our uh, platform. Like it can be your uh, either a VR device like Oculus Rift, Oculus Quest, or it can be Hololens too. So if it is Hololens too, it is not completely virtual. Like I just explained here. So it can be of two types. So it either it can be like. Uh, very very simple like if i uh, go to the basics if it is virtual reality you cannot see the real world but if it is augmented or mixed reality you can see the real world so this both is part of the metaverse metaverse doesn't mean that it is completely virtual and you cannot interact with your real world okay thanks yeah, yeah. No, thanks manorama for this excellent talk uh, i have a question in the healthcare domain how far uh, uh, this MR has been implemented in the healthcare uh, domain and uh, how uh, how it can be enhanced uh, further in future? Thank you. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so in healthcare domain, as far as I have seen, uh, recently MR has been uh, used for uh, robotic surgery. Even it is used in um, education, like education when I say before uh, in the like before becoming a doctor, we have those courses, right? Where they try to like, you can see in this GIF, they are trying to just explain the parts or they are trying to uh, see the uh, in-depth uh, uh, view of the human body. So this is where uh, it is like, uh, it has come uh, till now, MR has come till now in healthcare domain, but uh, there is a lot of uh, work that is going around and that we can just, uh, we can find it on, uh, we can find it on communities. Okay. Can, can you mention any of the uh, top uh, healthcare uh, companies who already has implemented this uh, idea? Uh, in India, in India, there was a, a, a startup in Gujarat, uh, but I'm not uh, I'm not sure about the name because I saw uh, that uh, work three years back. So they did with uh, Oculus uh, Rift. So, but I'm not, uh, currently I don't remember it, but I can get back to you. Uh, Manoram, I can answer that one. So in Johnson & Johnson, right, um, uh, for during for surgeons, uh, the new surgeons, right, they are giving uh, mixed reality using uh, the all these trainings. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Training, for training they use it, yeah. Yeah, and also Apollo has uh, signed up with Microsoft and uh, they've built this uh, mixed reality model so that... Uh, your internal organs can be viewed by the patient and uh, concurrently the risk uh, score could also be generated for that patient. You yeah. have that in LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one last question, Madarma. Is there any other mixed reality device other than HoloLens 2? Because uh, recently I read in one of the articles, they said that they stopped uh, conceptualizing the HoloLens 3 and there is no more HoloLens version. So is it the end of a mixed reality HoloLens 2 or any other scope for mixed reality? So there are uh, there are other devices as well that uh, people might have heard about Magic Leap, but I'm not sure how uh, it is being used nowadays. But two years back, uh, like it was in uh, people were using Magic Leap also. And for HoloLens 3, I have also heard about it, uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure that yeah if they are going to uh, release or not. But yeah, for Apple, they are soon going to release uh, AR glasses. And I think uh, their AR glasses uh, have been in news from a long time. Uh, I think they are planning to release it this year or early next year. So that is uh, also like you can consider it as alternative to our HoloLens 2 that I just talked about. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And if anyone saw a good, good doctor, uh, they will also use uh, this MR devices. Yeah.
Any other questions? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, thank you so much, Manorma.